So most people start learning this uh, male reproductive, female reproductive systems, or in this in a lot of detail in high school. And so most of the students I work with are in high school. And I hear, you know, guys especially, because they're high schoolers, they just they make penis jokes and sperm jokes and semen jokes all the time. And one of the things that, that I've mentioned to them and that they, you know, they just think is funny is that there's a difference between semen and sperm. So semen is going to be the sperm plus extras. Okay, and we'll talk about what those extras are, but the extras come from glands that, that aren't uh, directly affiliated in sort of sperm production. So it turns out that the sperm isn't just released alone. Sperm is released with a bunch of other things that sort of help nurture it, support it, help it get where it needs to be, and then even sort of maybe work on the uterus a little bit to help the sperm get where it needs to go. And there's three main glands, and these are sort of what these glands make up sort of the male accessory reproductive glands. So what we'll do is we'll talk about those to begin with, and then, you know, like we did in the male anatomy video, we'll then look at these in cross-section as well. All right, so the first one of these is going to be the seminal vesicles. <laughs> seminal vesicles. So the seminal vesicles are sort of going to be like the biggest contributor to the semen in general. So something about like 60% of all the fluid in semen is going to come from the seminal vesicles. Other thing you should know about the seminal vesicles is that this fluid sort of comes after the sperm. So the sperm's released and then the seminal fluid is going to come sort of like directly after the sperm's released. So they're, they're not mixed together necessarily. Uh, a couple of the big things that the seminal vesicles provide is uh, a sugar. And then that sugar is obviously to help power the sperm. The sperm needs energy to sort of swim, right? It's got like a tail, and then that tail needs energy to sort of propel the sperm forward. That sugar is usually going to be fructose. And then the second big thing the seminal vesicles contribute is going to be uh, prostaglandins. So the prostaglandins help facilitate uterine contraction. So when the sperm makes it into the uterus, the uterus sort of needs to... Uh, needs to contract a little bit to propel the sperm upward into the fallopian tubes where the egg is going to be and that's where the sperm wants to meet the egg and hopefully fertilize it so uh, the prostaglandins help with uterine contractions uh, okay so that's the seminal vesicles right after the seminal vesicles we'll talk about the prostate which is probably the most famous of all these but the the prostate uh, it's going to go sort of is mixes directly with the sperm. Part of what it does, actually, part of what all these glands do is help alkali uh, help make the sperm alkaline, and we'll talk about that when we get to the next gland in a bit and why that's important. But the big thing that you should know about the prostate is that you know only contributes a small percentage to the semen, and there's citrate in it. So citrate is another form of energy that the sperm is going to use to sort of propel forward. It also helps facilitate helps create alkaline environment all right okay the last of the three glands are gonna is gonna be the bulbo urethral gland okay so the bulbo urethral gland uh, this one is famous because it's what produces pre ejaculate so if we look at these, the three of them, right? So as I said before, the seminal vesicles produce fluid that goes after the sperm, prostate with the sperm, and then the bulbo-urethral gland sort of goes before the sperm. Now the big thing about pre-ejaculate is that it's alkaline. All right, and that's super important. So remember that in males, the urethra is sort of the only way out. So both sperm makes it through there and urine makes it through there. Urine is acidic. Sperm is really, really sensitive, and sperm needs to be sort of at the right pH or it'll die. And so the bulbo-urethral gland sort of secretes this pre-ejaculate alkaline solution that is supposed to neutralize the urethra so that when the sperm comes through, it doesn't get destroyed in an acidic environment. So if you're going to remember anything about the bulbo-urethral gland, I, I doubt it'll be hard, so again, if you're a guy in high school. But... Uh, remember that it produces an alkaline solution. All right, so those are the three glands, and now let's look at these guys in cross-section. Okay, so here's the image, and let's highlight where all these guys are located. So 
uh, at the top right here, you've got the seminal vesicle, right? Remember the seminal vesicle, this is the majority of it, 60%. Uh, you also have the bulbourethral gland here at the bottom, and you have the prostate gland right above. So remember that, right, I put them in this order, I put them in this order on purpose, right, because uh, anatomically, this one's going to be superior to this one, which is superior to this one, and it sort of the helps also helps you also to remember the order with which they go, right? So the bulbourethral gland is going to go first. The sperm is going to follow after it goes from the ejaculatory duct into the urethra. The prostate gland is going to secrete its fluid right behind that sperm, and then the seminal or kind of with it, and then the seminal vesicle is going to come right after. Okay.